Hello. When you have fish, you have to make sure that their home is always kept nice and clean. I'm going to clean the glass on the inside of the tank today. So I'll turn off the light, and I'll put the top over here out of the way. And, you know, just a, a little gentle scraping does the trick. Like that. Oh, maybe I should move this rock out of the way over here. Yeah. I'll put it over here. Uh-oh. These fish look upset. Well, I guess I'd be upset, too, if someone was moving my things around. Don't worry, I'll put everything back just the way it was. You know what? I don't think they believe me. They're acting just like Emily did when she drifted off. The tugboats were all gathered at the Great Ocean Dock for storytelling time. George was telling everyone about the time he moved a giant super tanker. I moved that super tanker all by myself, he said, booming and booming his big engine, just to make sure everyone was paying extra close attention to him. I believe it is time to go to sleep, said Fodak. The tugs began to head for their places around the dock, except for George. What's the matter, George? said Hank. I can't move, grunted George roaming and booming his big engine some more. George can't even move to his dock, giggled Hank. Are you sure you moved that super tanker all by yourself? said Theodore. And the other tugs began to laugh. George turned and saw why he couldn't move. Theodore had tied his tow rope to the dock. Good one, Theodore, said Hank. <laughs> even George had to laugh. Theodore was always playing jokes on everyone. all turned to their places around the dock. Sleep tight, called Theodore. Don't let the dock bugs bite. A little later, something strange happened. Emily began to drift from her dock and into the harbor with her eyes closed. She floated along straight into the fuel dock. I'll fill her up, she mumbled, still half asleep. Her eyes opened a little more. What's an oil pump doing in my dock? She said to herself. And then, Emily realized she wasn't in her dock. It was all the way across the harbor. How, how did I get out here? She wondered. The next morning, the tugs were waking up. Almost. Emily hadn't slept very well, and she could barely open her eyes. Theodore, she yawned. Did you tow me to the fuel dock last night? Did I tow you to the fuel dock? Repeated Theodore. I know you're always playing jokes, said Emily. Wasn't me, Emily, said Theodore. But it's a good idea, Hank grinned to Theodore. Now Emily saw Theodore grinning too. She didn't say anything, but she had a funny feeling Theodore wasn't exactly telling her the truth. set off to work, moving a small cargo ship into the harbor. She was so sleepy from waking up in the middle of the night that she kept yawning great big yawns. It sounded a bit like a foghorn. <laughs> Theodore was taking a load of supplies out to Kaylee's Cove when he saw Emily. Emily, he called. You look tired. Do you want me to help you dock that ship? Now, Emily never needed help docking a teeny-weeny cargo ship. She thought Theodore was planning another joke on her. No thanks, she frowned. All that squinting and yawning had made Emily even more tired. And before she knew it, she was sailing along with the ship, fast asleep. 
Theodore could see everything. Emily was still moving the ship towards its dock. He began to head towards her. But Emily docked that ship just as good as if her eyes were wide open. Almost. Oh! The little bump woke Emily up. Who put that dock there? She frowned. I can't trust anyone around here. Well, Theodore could see that it was only a matter of time before Emily got into real trouble. He decided he would keep his eye on her, just in case. That night, once again, Emily was fast asleep when she began to float from her dock. Now, Theodore had stayed awake, waiting and watching, and as soon as he saw Emily floating off, he followed along after her. Emily, he called, wait up. All the noise woke the other tugboats. And they saw Theodore give Emily a gentle nudge. Yes, yes, what is it? Right away, Emily could see that she wasn't in her dock. So it was you who towed me out here, she said, spotting Theodore. You see, Emily thought that Theodore was pushing her into the harbor. Emily, you went out here all by yourself, said Theodore. I don't believe you, Theodore, said Emily. I can't trust you anymore. But I'm telling the truth, called Theodore. Tell her, everyone. But to the toads, it did look like Theodore had been pushing Emily. No one said a peep. Hmm. One by one, the tugs went back to sleep. Except for Emily. She was sure Theodore was going to tow her into the harbor again. So she decided to do something about it. Emily glanced around. Theodore was asleep. I'm going to find a place where nobody can bother me, she said to herself. And I'll sleep all night and all day. Maybe, maybe two days, she yawned. to sleep and sure enough she started to drift Emily drifted right out into the ocean she drifted all night Just as the sun was coming up, Theodore opened his eyes and looked around. Emily, he said. She was gone again. Theodore headed into the harbor. I hope she's okay, he said to himself. He started to check all the places where Emily had been the day before. drifting back into the harbor, still fast asleep, and straight towards Bedford Bowie. Bedford began dinging his bell, 
Stay away! Stay away! Theodore heard the sound and saw the sight. Emily was going to bump Bedford. Theodore blew his loudest warning whistle. Uh, Emily! Emily, wake up! Uh, he knew he was too far away to do anything. Uh, At last, Emily did wake up, just in time. Theodore? Emily gasped. What happened? What are you doing out here? I was looking for you, replied Theodore. You were floating in your sleep again. Well, when Emily heard this, she felt really silly. So, you were telling me the truth all along, she said quietly. Of course I was, smiled Theodore. I'm your friend. I'm sorry I didn't trust you, Theodore, said Emily. It's a good thing you were here. Something terrible might have happened. Well, what could be worse than this? Said Bedford woozily. But what am I going to do? Emily said sadly. I can't drift around in my sleep every night. Theodore looked over at Bedford, ringing his bell. And he had an idea. A wonderful idea. Emily, he said, you are going to sleep like an angelfish tonight. I just have to make a little stop at the supply shed today. I'm sorry, Bedford. At the Great Ocean Dock that night, George told another one of his big stories. What? He groomed and boomed. I battled a giant squid with eyes as big as bumpers. And soon, it was time for the tugs to go to sleep. And that night, Emily knew she would have a wonderful sleep. You see, Theodore had borrowed a buoy belt from the supply shed and tied it onto Emily's side. So if you do start to drift in your sleep, he told her, I'll hear you right away. Sleep tight, called Emily. Don't let the dog bugs bite. The other tugs moved to their places around the dock, too. Soon, everyone was happily fast asleep. And Emily had the best sleep of all. Well, did that story make you feel better? Don't worry, I'll put your home back just the way it was. You can count on it. I just have to finish cleaning the glass on the inside. That's all. Just a little more scraping here. Thanks for visiting us here in the Big Harbor. And we'll see you all again next time. There. Now, I'll just get the rock and put it back for them. Right in there. There you go. There now. Home sweet home again. Now, how about a little snack? Huh? Yeah, there you go. Just remember to chew your food. Theodore. He's a tugboat and a friendly tugboat. Too.